Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen, members of the Common Council, Administrator Wolf, and guests. In 2019, the city of Sheboygan contracted Clifton Larson Allen to perform an operational assessment of the finance department, and earlier this year, they presented their findings. This evening, the Deputy Finance Director, Tara Dewey, and myself are here to provide you an update on the progress made on those items. Some of the focus areas of improvement, which assisted us in creating our priorities, and were included um, policies and procedures, which these were fairly non-existent, or those that we did have were quite outdated when we began. Internal controls, these relate primarily to our setups and structure and tend to be key risk areas, as well as staffing and tools, the resources which are key in accomplishing all of these improvements. And the tools tend to be software related. Now what I will do is I'll hand it off to our Deputy Director, Tara Dewey, as she speaks uh, in more detail about some of these items. Okay, I'm gonna start off by going over some of the items that we have completed so far. Um, first off, we've been working on those procedures that Marty just mentioned that were identified in the CLA assessment. Um, to date, we have created 70 written procedures and those are needed so that staff can be cross-trained. Um, and we've been able to create some efficiencies as those procedures have been reviewed and a new set of eyes get to look at them that can lead to questions, investigation, and then we've been able to um, make some of our processes more streamlined as uh, the check run process being revised and is, is an example of that. Next, we've looked at all of the position purposes in the finance department, and we've updated those while creating the accountant three position purpose. So we've shifted some of the responsibilities between um, the position purposes so that's why these tenured staff will be using the written procedures now because they're gonna have to learn processes that they hadn't been doing um, in their previous time here with the city. Also, it was identified that a journal entry approval process needed to be created. And that was mainly for a separation to keep a segregation of duties. So right now I am approving the accountant's journal entries and the director is approving my journal entries. We've also worked on expanding our P-card program and we've closed some of the store charge accounts because the process of reconciling and tracking those expenditures was very inefficient. So we've created an Excel spreadsheet um, that is able to improve the departmental and summary tracking. So we have other staff that are working on improving that process still um, to make it work uh, even better. Then we have hired the accountant three position because the finance department, it, it needs more horsepower, as Tad uh, mentions, to address the items in the CLA assessment, our audit findings, and also to prepare for staff, staff transitions as we have some very tenured staff that will be looking at retirement over the next coming years. Um, we've also been providing MUNIS training to the library and municipal court staff so that they're able to perform daily receding, which helps maintain that segregation of duties. And then lastly, we've been working on the budget book spreadsheet. So there's a Word and an Excel component that we've merged for each of the orgs, and all the files have been uniformly formatted, and that allows for us to be able to make mass changes to the files, such as this year we had added some accounts and we're able to do that addition in one fell swoop instead of having to go into each of those documents to do that. Um, then I'm gonna move on to our items that are in progress. So we're currently reviewing the procurement, investments, and capital asset and depreciation policies and we're reviewing those and updating them. Earlier this year, Marty and I had attended a CIVMIC training on writing policies and procedures where we were given a recommended uh, policy template from CIVMIC and we intend to implement and use that, that template. Also a very important process that we're working on right now is a cash and bank reconciliation. 
The development of a full reconciliation process is critical so that we can start to have a month end close, which has not been happening in the past. We've been able to make some small changes that have made a big impact on, ex on streamlining that process. And I've been working with our consultant to fully establish the process and document the procedure. Next, we've been doing vendor cleanup. Our system has many vendors that are duplicated for various reasons. The IT department was able to extract the vendor list into Excel, and then one of our accountants determined the vendors that need to be updated, vendors that can be merged, and verified 1099 filing requirements. We were also able to delete several hundred vendors that had no activity. Next is the purchase order process. Um, we have created a centralized city purchasing email so that we're not using an individual's email because when there's staff turnover, then you're, you're left with the problem of having to um, get those emails forwarded. And we'll also be working on merging vendors and then creating unique PO addresses, which will improve our process and allow for more POs to be sent automatically and electronically. Next is the sidewalk assessment process and conversion from AS400. We're working collaboratively with the DPW and we just recently met with them to identify a timeline of when assessment details are needed from DPW for the finance department to bill out the assessment, allow time for payments and payment plans to be set up before that's being put onto the tax roll. And lastly, um, the electronic file organization, as COVID hit and people were working from home, it was called attention to the fact that we really need to be able to find files efficiently and clean up our naming conventions of folders and files. So we're actively working on, working on cleaning that up. I'll hand it back to Marty. Thank you, Tara. Definitely some progress being made there, um, but I'm sure your next question is what's next? Um, certainly we had some already pre-identified focus areas to uh, take as our next steps. Uh, as Tara had mentioned, one of those key steps is to test and review those procedures that were created. Uh, when you create 70 brand new procedures, you're bound to find some tweaks and, and modifications that are necessary. And our, our newly hired accountant three uh, is going to be performing some shadowing of the coworkers within the department. And as they perform the tasks, she can review the written procedure and identify areas that either are missed, omitted, incorrect, or even possibly recommend some, some modifications for more efficiencies. Uh, we'll also be putting some greater emphasis to our AS400 to Munis conversion. That's definitely something that I know many of you have already heard about. Um, some of the steps that have been taken is we've identified what we call our Munis super users. Uh, those super users will be forming teams and certainly in finance we have several super users identified. Uh, those super users, users will dig into the Munis uh, modules that are necessary uh, for in continuing the improvements. We've identified certain key areas uh, that the Munis modules need to be uh, converted from the AS400 and into Munis. Those would include loans, special assessments, <clears throat> capital assets, personal property, and, and then there are also others out there. Uh, certainly those align well with some of the other items that we've talked about with our policies and procedures. So these, these tend to be linked together, which then continues a unified approach of completing a full task. As we work through many of these uh, new module setups, we'll also be looking at correct mapping of accounts in the background. Um, and while we do that, we can review and look for opportunities to modify our fund structure and chart of accounts. Uh, those various improvements uh, include merging of funds, Currently, we've uh, identified several areas of fund cleanup uh, where we have, for example, tax incremental districts. We have debt service and capital <coughs> funds, and we're looking to merge that into one uh, tax incremental district fund. That will minimize the <coughs> cost transferring um, and or adjustments made between funds. It also keeps a cleaner 
uh, full picture of each tax incremental district. This was something that we did have a phone conversation with our auditors to kind of vet the pros and cons of that. Um, they actually have, you can do it either way, but they, they certainly see it more often with it being a, a single fund rather than split between the two. Um, also, while we're reviewing some of those objects uh, within the funds, each of the funds or accounts as we like to call them, uh, we're going to be reviewing for any redundancy uh, so that we can clean up and remove some maybe not as useful accounts, but also be able to identify areas where we're missing some, some key and in, intuitive type accounts uh, that will help department heads as they ex, uh, code their expenses. Uh, we also will be looking at some of the account structure setups, such as how we utilize our do to do from accounts. Sometimes the software we found uh, has a better purpose for certain types of accounts, the way that they were structured than how we've been using them. So it'll create a more effective and efficient uh, workflow as well as month end and year end close. Um, we're also going to be working collaboratively with our IT department regarding MUNIS user role setups. Uh, this really gets at the internal controls and enhances and improves our uh, approval process both on transactional basis but also when creating new funds, new accounts, um, and, and transactions or even new vendors. On our next slide, um, it, it's key to have all of these initiatives but in order to show progress and keep tabs on all of these, you certainly have to have a good tracking mechanism in place. Uh, following the CLA assessment, uh, there was a summary document that was built with key areas of assignments of who the staff member is to lead the project, uh, who's all involved, what are the, the um, other departments involved, what are the key deadlines, both from a start or a starting point and a, a deadline uh, to complete the project. This, this document is being currently merged with a previously defined and built action plan for the department, as well as staff task uh, workloads. The staff, ta the staff task workloads also will then be able to have identified procedures linked to it so that we can follow through where the previous uh, procedures were, were built. Um, as Tara had mentioned, um, a lot of the uh, procedures that were created um, definitely have to be in a workable uh, system. And so we also will be building a uh, table of contents and a, a structure so that we can find these, uh, whether you're the primary staff member or a cross-trained staff member. So some organization of these uh, procedures will be key. Um, and then we'll also be looking to uh, provide quarterly updates uh, at our finance and personnel committee, um, and then also be able to come back to the Common Council with any updates and questions. So with that, um, I guess I turn it back over to the mayor if there are any questions uh, this evening for us. Mm -hmm.